Welcome everyone to the three-day international virtual workshop on research writing and publications in high-impact journals, jointly organized by Lavender Literary Club India, Cap Cameron Trust, and Malaysian Industry Relations and Human Resource Association Malaysia. Today we have three sessions, and we are moving to the first session. Our speaker is Dr. Hardeep Singh. Senior academician, researcher, author, orator, mentor, motivational speaker, and life coach. Dr. Hardeep Singh, having 20 years of total experience, is a life member of various international bodies like IAERC, SI, IAC, SIT, IADRC, IFRSA, and ISTD. He has been honored, honored as a patron member by the World Academic Industry Research Collaboration Organization for the period of lifetime. His profile has been published in World Book of Researchers 2018 at Oxford, United Kingdom. He has been esteemed to address various conferences as keynote speaker. To his credit, go 41 international conferences, 36 national conferences, 11 UGC seminars, and 100 plus webinars, workshops, FDPs, EDPs, 20 plus hours, 30 plus professional memberships, four books, five anthology books. He has presented 100 plus research papers, articles. He has published 100 plus research papers, articles in conference proceedings, and journals of national international fame under the tag of publishers of well reputed like LCS, Scopus, IE, and Springer, etc. He has guided 100 plus projects to the students of BTEC and MBA. He has also guided MTech and PhD candidates for writing and publication of research papers. His latest book. Co authored by Professor J.S. Jogi and Dr. D.P. Kothari, a well known scientist, educationalist, named as written and oral technical communication skills for engineers or scientists, is available in eight foreign languages. We are very glad to have you, sir. This session is yours. So, good evening, everybody. Thanks, sir, for introducing me. First of all, Today, I would like to pay my sincere thanks and regards to Dr. Frank Jocin and organizer of this three-day international conference workshop on research, writing, editing, and publication. I once again thank Dr. Jocin for inviting me to deliver my talk on research and publication ethics mandate for quality in research. So coming to the point, that whenever we all pass out from our postgraduate degree, we move towards doctorate degree, we move towards MPhil degree. Even nowadays, research is becoming so popular that we have to do research projects at even our graduate degrees, BTEC degree, MTEC degree, MCOM and MBA, etc. Our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, has introduced NAP 2020 in which research has been made mandatory even for the school students. That is very good step by our honorable prime minister. So when we talk about ethics or ethical life, we have to follow some ethics, manners, etiquettes, even in our daily life. It may be our social life. It may be our family life. We have to follow some ethics. Talking little ahead, there are also some rules and regulations that we need to follow in our work area or job area or in our business. These ethics that we follow in our job area that are called professional ethics or business ethics. We need these rules and regulations to follow to live a smooth life and grow in our life. Next, moving towards, as I have already talked, about the need of business ethics, need of social ethics, need of family ethics in our social life, family life, and daily life. Similarly, there are some rules and regulations which we need to follow during performing our research work, research project. It may be an, in our uh, study life, PG degree, doctorate degree, PhD, and field, or it may be our, you can say, research project. We have to follow some rules and regulations. These rules and regulations that we follow to make our search a worthy research, a quality research that are called professional research ethics. 
these ethics are required so that our search work may become worthy i would like to add one thing that your research becomes only worthy only valuable when you are giving a solution of a existing problem to the society and only then your search becomes valuable it becomes worthy we may get credit of it and lastly very important to say that society and nation may get benefited from your real research work original research work and ethical research work so dear participants uh, i hope we all know what is research research is a combination of two words re and search research is defined as the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way so as to generate new concepts methodologies and understandings this could include synthesis and analysis of previous search to the extent that it leads to new and creative outcomes now one again one more term that comes in our way that is innovation there are two things research and innovation research is creation of new knowledge from the existing data that we already have we have to research it again search it so innovation is the spark of insight that leads a scientist or inventor to investigate an issue or phenomena innovation is defined as the process of making an idea or invention into a goods or services or implementation of new ideas that result into the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in the offering goods or services that creates value and are of which customers may pay i would like to let you know few points what is difference between research and innovation whereas research and innovation both play an essential role in triggering smart and sustainable growth and sustainable development to our society and to our nation research is systematic hopefully investigation of a problem that works to extend your knowledge it typically follows existing line of thought and what is innovation innovation is a process followed to obtain something new that solves a specific problem and can be utilized innovation is a jump from or an addition to a line of thinking i mean creating something new with an additional function that is called innovation moving forward we uh, my today's talk is research ethics professional research ethics so what are ethics ethics are the norms of conduct that distinguish between acceptable and unacceptable behavior that tell us what is wrong and what is right what to do and what to not to do what to follow and what not to follow that are ethics ethics are the principles and guidelines that help us to hold things we value there are two uh, again two terms ethics and manners manners are different things manners are that things that we learn from our childhood from our parents and ethics are the norms of conduct that we that we learn when we go to our professional life higher education to our business life that are ethics again coming what are research ethics i already discussed with you that ethics are uh, that tells you the difference between right and wrong and the word that is adjoining with ethics that is research ethics the ethics that involve application of fundamental ethical principles to planning conducting and publishing of research the ethics that tell us what is acceptable in research and what is not acceptable what is avoidable and what is unavoidable what we should do to make research a good worthy quality research and what to avoid so that our search may become a good search good quality research and our nation may be benefited our society may be benefited 
from the work that we are doing so another point comes whenever we come in our life anything someone suggests advices a question comes in our mind why to do this why should we do this so uh, the question why should be answered otherwise we will not be able to implement that thing when we will not uh, when we will not know the answer why so why why research ethics research ethic is a sign of respect for other researchers and cause no harm to the participants it is a token of respect gratitude to the our researchers um, this thing i will discuss uh, in the further uh, you can say further talk uh, research ethics is a professional requirement it is a requirement to obtain funding there are many organizations many agencies many departments that provide fundings to the research projects like csir then aict or india council of technical education and ugc university grants commission there are many international bodies uh, they are also uh, giving fundings to the research projects so it is a required to obtain the funding why because if your research is of not good quality research it is not worthy you can say uh, research work you are submitting a proposal or you are submitting a synopsis of your research project and if it is not showing the ethical research ethics that you are applying in your research it will be you can say there is a review committee who reviews your proposal that uh, this proposal or this research work should be given grant or not is it is it will be worthy to give uh, uh, funding to this research project that review committee decides on the uh, ethical you can say ethics that you applied in your research proposal research synopsis so um, to get, to get funding we have to uh, we have to follow professional research ethics it is a requirement to obtain the funding from the funding agencies failing to conduct research ethically result in research or researcher being dismissed or rejected from the research community if you fail to uh, follow the research ethics uh, while writing your research paper while publishing your research paper the review committee of the conference of the journals that will dismiss your paper that will reject your paper and if it, it is your phd dissertation or mphil dissertation mtech dissertation the expert committee that will reject your phd dissertation or phd thesis and your research work will be dismissed in the same way the research proposal or research synopsis if you are not following these guidelines these ethics then your research proposal or research synopsis that will again be rejected then what are the basic principles of research innovation and publication ethics uh, what are the basic principles uh, first thing is honesty that we are learning or we are getting advice from our elders uh, that honesty is the best policy honesty again comes on the first number one in the basic principles of research innovation and publication ethics you need to be honest if you are honest everything will be fair and your search will be worthy and valuable then getting integrity integrity is being honest when nobody is uh, nobody is you can say watching you nobody is looking a um, you can say looking a care on you uh, even then you have to be uh, honest then carefulness openness respect for intellectual property that is having copyrights and everything we have to uh, give respect to that thing and if we are using any you can say other uh, researchers or other scientists you can say uh, thing we have to put it in the reference we have to put the citations then confidentiality respect for the colleagues you should have respect for the colleagues other researchers who have done research in the same area you have referred their search paper or search project uh, to just take an idea or take an help uh, you should not copy or you should not uh, you can say present that work as your own work that is again disrespect your colleagues or your researchers or uh, scientist fellows then social responsibility again professional research ethics is a social responsibility mm -hmm. uh, 
that is uh, these are the basic principles of search innovation and publication ethics then comes what are the important areas in which research and publication ethics they should be followed first is authorship when we uh, when we write a research paper author a research paper there may be mm, there may be many authors first author second author third author co-author and uh, you can say many author so in authorship there should be again research ethics how mm, uh, likewise in some paper you may see there are ghost authors or there are some authors dummy authors they haven't worked on that research paper and even then their name is added in that research paper or sometime what comes that we ask somebody other to write your search paper and you take that search paper write your own name and you uh, present as your own research paper that is again uh, against the you can say research or publication ethics so uh, first important area is authorship the research project the research work the research proposal research synopsis or search paper that you are submitting submitting the name of which author is written on there he should have done that research paper research work and he should have uh, full knowledge about that research work that only comes under research ethics authorship then comes plagiarism what is plagiarism uh, uh, that uh, it is again an important area uh, in search and publication ethics i will talk about plagiarism in detail uh, uh, in the next talk then peer review research with various subjects and research misconduct all these come under important areas of search and publication ethics now we uh, in the uh, last talk i was talking about plagiarism what is plagiarism plagiarism is the act of stealing someone else work the talk that i was already uh, talking with you in the previous uh, moments uh, that uh, uh, in the authorship uh, authorship uh, topic i was uh, letting you know th same thing that what is plagiarism plagiarism is the act of stealing somebody someone else work and attempting to pass it off as your own likewise in an examination uh, i don't know the question i uh, i look it from the you can say uh, forward bench or backward bench and then uh, write it on my own uh, answer sheet and submit in the exam to the examiner examiner checks it as my uh, that that is my own answer but that is not my own answer that i have stole from the forward bench or backward bench in the same way plagiarism is the act of stealing someone else's research work and attempting it to pass it off as your own plagiarism includes copying text it may be uh, you can say copying of text ideas images or data from another source even from your own publication that is self plagiarism without giving credit to the original source if you are using some data or some image from you can say other search work other dissertation you have to mention over there uh, the name of the author from where you have taken you have to give credit by writing in your references and in your uh, citations also and if plagiarism is detected during the peer review process by the expert committee it may be your dissertation phd dissertation you can say mtech dissertation or it may be your research work the manuscript becomes rejected that expert expert committee rejects your manuscript when plagiarism is detected over there you uh, i would like to let you know that it has become sometimes we think that we are super smart we are very smart and we will take this matter nobody will uh, come to know from where i have taken and they will uh, take it as my own but it has become super smart there are many applications uh, many you can say uh, plagiarism detecting tools that can detect your plagiarism uh, there are many Turnitin is one of them that is very much used by many universities, organizations, many, you can say, conference organizers and journals to detect the plagiarism. So we should take care of this thing. We should do research with honesty, with integrity, with carefulness. Now, I would like to know uh, types of plagiarism, complete plagiarism, direct plagiarism, self or auto plagiarism 
then paraphrasing plagiarism in accurate authorship that i have already talked then accidental plagiarism that plagiarism that uh, that is done accidentally that i did i say that i i didn't know this thing accidentally this has been done by me so that is called accidental plagiarism and source based plagiarism what is complete plagiarism complete plagiarism is the most severe form of plagiarism where a researcher takes a manuscript or study that someone else has created and submitted it under his or her name it is equivalent to intellectual theft and stealing that is complete plagiarism then partial that was complete 100% plagiarism and partial plagiarism that there are uh, some parts you have stolen from some others work that is called partial plagiarism then direct plagiarism direct plagiarism is word for word transcription of a section of someone else work that is direct plagiarism then self plagiarism self plagiarism is defined as a type of plagiarism in which the writer republishes a work in its entirety or reuses portion that we are stealing our own work our own publication that has been published we are again submitting it for uh, publication then then comes inaccurate publication what uh, inaccurate plagiarism what is inaccurate inaccurate authorship or misleading attribution can happen in two ways in one form when an individual contributes to a manuscript but does not get credit for it the second form is opposite when an individual gets credit without contributing to the work that is inaccurate plagiarism then accidental accidental i have already discussed that uh, we say that mistakenly this has been done i didn't know uh, it has been done accidentally but uh, there is uh, there is no such excuse that uh, you may not be punished for accidental plagiarism accidental plagiarism uh, is again punishable every type of plagiarism is uh, you can say uh, punishable we should uh, we should take care of this thing we should follow uh, the uh, this professional research ethics uh, so that there may not be any allegation in our search work there is one thing data fabrication data fabrication is making up data results this includes manipulating images micrographs radiological images removing outliers or inconvenient results and changing adding or omitting data points etc that is data fabrication then there is one thing image manipulation we all know what is manipulation that image manipulation involves the transformation or alteration of a photograph using various methods and techniques to achieve desired results image files must not be manipulated or adjusted in any way this could lead to misinterpretation of the information provided by the original image so coming to the point that avoiding there should not be uh, you can say plagiarism in our search work in our search proposal or dissertation how can we avoid plagiarism very important to know the very simple and very you can say <clears throat> very convenient uh, way to avoid plagiarism that is the only way the first point that i have already discussed with you that simply be honest you should be honest do your work honestly collect your data honestly uh, select your respondents honestly and you, then apply the research tools on honest, honestly do data analysis honestly and you uh, you will know that your research will be a good research when you you have done it do uh, being honest give credit where it is due acknowledge the author of the original work when you have used create your own magic your own work original research work be honest and there will be no plagiarism there will be no allegation on your search and uh, then again that you use your own work as often as possible but using someone else work excessively 
can be constructed as plagiarism court or fight the sources properly there are two types of uh, you uh, all will be knowing that there are two types of uh, reference method is uh, mla style and aps style american psychological association and modern language association style uh, there are two styles that many organize uh, conference organizers or you can say many universities or many journals that follow according to their own you can say comfortability or according to their own rules and regulations that they have made for the paper submission then comes ethical guidelines first thing is educate yourself you should know everything that i have already discussed with you that you should be honest you should do the research with integrity carefulness give respect to your fellow colleagues to the fellow researchers Uh, give credit or to the other searchers there should not be you can say dummy authors or ghost authors uh, all this is against the ethical guidelines you should educate yourself you should know everything about data falsification data fabrication image manipulation everything uh, right and wrong what to do and not to do you should educate yourself this is the main thing main ethical guideline in search innovation and publication then make a thorough research learn the rules for citations and references then check your work when you have done your work you should check it that there should not be anything illegal or anything that may be that may make your make your search work uh, unvaluable or it may it may give you some uh, it may lead to some punishment to you so cite your source include quotations present your own idea create your own mag uh, magic that you have done a real search a original search then after doing use plagiarism checker before submitting any research work or search dissertation that there may not be any copy paste matter or any image or any data fabrication or falsification may not be there so you should use plagiarism checker there are many online plagiarism checkers and many you can say paid plagiarism checkers that may tell you that whether your your you can say this research work is acceptable or not uh, i think uh, up to 15% of this uh, plagiarism is acceptable and uh, more than that it is not acceptable you you should you should um, submit your research work under the acceptable you can say percentage of the plagiarism understand the value of citations double check your work the once you have checked then again you should do double check uh, put all direct quotes in quotation marks when in doubt give a citation so <clears throat> all these i have i have talked about research and publication ethics that we should follow to make our search valuable worthy and it may give get benefit to the society and lastly we may not uh, may not get any allegation from anybody regarding the research that uh, there is uh, th these lackings or this thing wrong in your search that is why we have to follow these research uh, uh, research you can say ethics professional research ethics so lastly mm, i would like to conclude my talk in one line that dear researchers dear authors academicians faculty members we all need to have ethical obligations with regard to good quality research that may give some solution to the existing problem of this society researchers have the duty to make publicly available the results of their research on various subjects and are accountable for the completeness and accuracy of their research work so lastly once again i would like to thank dr frank josin to give me this opportunity to share my views share my talk on this research and publication ethics that are very much mandatory in this research field so that every researcher or every academician may follow to give a good valuable and worthy uh, you can say solution to the existing problem of the society thanks
Dear participants, if you have any questions, you can ask. Sir, kindly give the difference between the citation and bibliography and reference. Uh, pardon, sir? Uh, the difference of uh, citation, bibliography, and reference. Where we have to use citation, where we have to use uh, reference, where we have to use bibliography. Bibliography we mainly use in the end of, you can say, books, that books we author. Uh, in the last, we write bibliography. In bibliography, we write the books that we have, uh, you can say, referred. And uh, references uh, we write in the end of the dissertation, in the end of the research paper. And uh, citations are the that uh, that are again used in the research papers and this in these uh, dissertations. Uh, but uh, citation means that uh, that we can add in the head uh, in the footers also that are citations and bibliography is written at the end of the books. We can uh, write bibliography and references both in the uh, end of the dissertation in bibliography we will write the you can say books that we have referred and in references uh, we will add the research papers that we have referred or the you can say uh, dissertations that we have referred uh, to take the ideas or to take the help to continue our search uh, that is uh, that come under references thank you sir for very informative session Dear participants, we are moving to the second session. And our speaker is Dr. Thilanga Jagaya, Assistant Professor of Special Education, College of Education, Nursing and Health Professions, University of Hartford, Westford, West Hartford, USA. We are very glad to have you, ma'am. The session is yours. Just give me a moment because um, I need to get my PowerPoint slide and then I can share. <laughs> can you see the slides? Can anyone answer if you can see the slide? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now it's visible. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. <clears throat> Just a moment. Okay. All right. So, good evening, everyone. So, as uh, the um, MC for the uh, session has introduced my name as Tilaga Jagaya. Yes, I teach at the University of Hartford uh, in West Hartford um, and I hope everyone is doing well and thank you for being here despite I think today is a very special day for everyone celebrating um, Valentine's Day and what's standing between you and Valentine's Day is now my presentation and I hope we'll have a good session and then you can go home and uh, celebrate the day. Uh, so, um, today's topic, actually I really like my topic of presentation um, because in academia or even if you're a student in a graduate program, a doctoral program, um, even for academicians like professors and lecturers, we all experience, no matter how an expert writer we are, at some point in time, if not every time, we all experience a writer's block. So, in fact, when I came up with the title of my presentation, I said, wow, this is pretty interesting. So I came up with no, no time, no idea, no inspiration. What is your excuse for writer's block? Okay. So, and how to overcome it. Um, so this is an informal presentation. So please do feel free to participate and ask questions. I'm not sure. I don't think there's a chat function, but uh, if there is an opportunity to um, talk in between, we could. Let me see how can I go to the next slide. Okay. Um, so before I start, so the goals for today's presentation is to first we need to understand what is writer's block and uh, how we can overcome it. And is it possible that we can use our writing process and whatever that pro writing process is between uh, what you choose to do 
uh, can that help you to progress in your writing? Uh, and the context for today, because I think we are in a professional context and we are all scholars, so I will talk in the sense like, you know, this is about journal article. If you have writer's block for journal article, grant proposal, book chapter, conference proposal, dissertation. So you can use the ideas from today's presentation like, oh, whenever I experience writer's block, can I do this? But this doesn't mean to say you cannot use it for informative writing or if you cannot use it for other genres like narrative writing. Yes, you can. Um, but today's focus would be on any scholarly activity. So before I start, some questions to ponder. Maybe you can think about it. If you want to speak, uh, you can unmute yourself and speak after I have asked this question. Like, you know, I always thought about whenever I have some writing activity to, activity to do, I, I always wonder, you know, people always say like, Oh, what's your hobby? Reading. So whenever I have free time, I like to read. Does anyone say, what's your hobby? Writing. Whenever I have free time, I, I like to write. Or does anyone have a habit? You know, most people have a habit. Oh, before I go to bed, I must read. But I wonder, do people ever say, before I go to bed, I must write? And if there's any uh, writing activity, are there people who just don't hesitate and start writing or do they procrastinate? So these are some questions that I ponder, and I wonder how pe what are people's habits about writing. If anybody wants to share any stories here at this point, I am willing to listen. Maybe uh, one or two persons. Or maybe we can have these questions answered at the end of the presentation. I, I can wait for that. And um, I'll move on. So um, uh, let's start with the definition first um, so that you understand what writer's block is. So when we talk about writer's block, it is a condition where um, a writer is unable to produce new writing. Remember, it's new writing. That means, let's say you're going to start writing a new journal article for a, 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 a journal that you want to publish, or you're going to just start writing your dissertation or you have an assignment that you have to submit to your lecturer. So it's a new piece, something that you have written before and you're just you know, trying to edit, revise, that you may not have the writer's block because you probably have the motivation, oh, all I have to do is change a few things. But when you have to start with a new writing, that's where you, uh, you experience the writer's block because it's like how much motivation you have to start writing something so or how much confidence you have like oh i can do this it, these are the things sometimes holds you back your lack of inspiration sometimes this you know if it's okay it's okay if this situation just occurs like um oh, I'm, i plan to write on a friday and you decided no i'm not doing it on a friday but i'll do it on a saturday so that's temporary but if you say i'll write on a friday and then one month later and you haven't written that will be a long lasting situation and you need to overcome this writer's block so because like as i said is whether it's a temporary situation or a long-term situation so we always feel like when you have a writing task to do you always feel like oh my god writing is so hard it is so difficult i don't even know where to start how do i start i don't even know if i understand my topic i don't even know what words to start with what's the first sentence should i write and then when all this you know when it's overwhelming you start finding excuses like okay maybe i'll put this aside and do something else that's more important so you keep pushing this writing task a lot that means you're not really motivated so you feel like oh i'm not really motivated to do so you prefer to do something that is easier for you to do and what more for people who have different commitments? If you have a full-time job or if you have, you know, you have a full-time job coming home to children at home. So all these things. And then you say, oh, I don't even have time to think about writing. And some of us will say, I'm not a writer. I'm not a good, I'm not good at writing at all. And then, you know, all these excuses actually are reasons why we have writer's block. So, and we come up with excuses. So my question to you would be like, what is your excuse for writer's block? And I think you prefer to answer at the end of the presentation, so I will wait for that too. Um, and I'll also have to say that uh, writing scares me. Even for me as a writer, I do write as much as I can. Being in the United States, we write every day. This is a shock for me. Originally, I'm from Malaysia. I hardly wrote when I was in Malaysia. So when I came to the US, I find that I'm writing every day. I think I spend 
at least one hour a day writing. Whether I'm writing for publication, whether I'm writing emails, I am always writing writing something. There's always something to write. And every time when I think of writing, I feel like I'm so exhausted. Um, in fact, um, I have uh, two students, uh, they're from India, and then they told me that, you know, when they are new students, and then they said, they were talking to me because I'm their advisor. They were talking to me. You know, one thing that they find very daunting is that the writing aspect. When we were in India, we never wrote so much. But when we came here, every day is all about writing. I said, it is so true. Okay. And like everyone else and me, a lot of people believe that they're not good at writing. Even I believe I'm not good at writing. But this is a very common fear. And you know what? We are actually in good company with almost every writer. Almost every writer feels I'm not good in writing. But if this is keeping you from doing the things that you aspire to do, then you need to do something about it. Um, in my some in, in, in some instances, you know, I, I, I feel like writing is so scary that I avoid writing so much that I prefer to do housework than to write. And I don't really like housework. But my house will be super clean on the days when I decide that I have to write. Um, you can share your stories with me later. <clears throat> now, why are we scared of writing? Why are we experiencing writer's block? We must know. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Writing is a very challenging skill. Uh, it's the most difficult skill compared to all the other skills that we have to learn, like reading, speaking, listening. So writing is really a challenging, especially cognitive processes. Why? Because we have to um, what we call go through multiple coordinated processes as we create a paper. We have to think of, first of all, we have to think of what are the points that we want to put down in the paper. So you think of all the main points, you think of all the, um, what we call uh, supporting details to the main point. And then you have to do organization. Then you have to make sure that the first sentence, the second sentence supports the main sentence, and then the third sentence supports the other. What are the choices of words that you have to use. Is my sentence structure correct? So there's so many things that your brains are thinking and it's not thinking one item at a time. They have to think multiple aspects at a time to write just one sentence. So it is really very challenging. And it's, you know, it, it, it is so challenging that within one minute you say, I'm already tired. And uh, if you have to write in English and if English is not your first language, then that adds to the level of complexity. So because you need to figure out a lot of things as you are writing. I'm sure you'll agree with me how difficult it is to start thinking and writing. So um, so in the academic writing phase, like we have all our writing academic papers. So let's start with, you know, um, how do we go through this process? So the thing is this, in academia, we do research. We're always excited about doing research. You know, we have already got this plan and then we go out there, we collect data and then we save our data, we work with our data, and then we analyze the data and then you say, yes, I've got the results that I wanted and you want to share it. And then what you do very quickly, oh, where can I publish this? So you look for a journal and then you read the submissions requirements that that, that journal has. And then you do all this preparation, you have hundreds of pages, of course, maybe not hundreds of pages of notes, and then you put everything in front of you and you say, okay, how do I begin? And like, where do I start? How do I go about this? So then you hit a wall. Um, you don't know how to move forward. And you start thinking, um, maybe I don't do it today, maybe tomorrow. And then you start hesitating. So you're slowly getting into this writer's block. In fact, to be honest, you know, I was thinking when I was a doctoral student, when I was doing my PhD, I thought my my uh, professors can just write, you know, fluently. And I noticed I've seen them also sitting there, putting their hands on the head like this and then looking and looking and staring. So all academicians definitely hit a block at some time when they are writing. OK, sometimes to start is challenging. Sometimes you have started writing and you continue and you have plenty of ideas and you wrote and then suddenly you blank out. So it is very important that you have a toolkit of strategies uh, how to overcome your writer's block. So here's the question. How do I overcome writer's block? So, so much has been said about writer's block, all the things that happens within writer's block. So what can we do? 
So to uh, overcome writer's block, one thing you can do is have a writing plan and schedule. So this is just a sample. I have three samples. So this is just a sample of if you're writing a dissertation, you can put down. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you can list. And then, you know, the subheadings here is your choice. Remember, you are writing your paper. You know what you're putting in. So first thing you do is have this writing plan, have the schedule, then start a set a time for writing every day if not every other day if you cannot write every day because you have other commitments then write for every other day and stick to the schedule that's important the discipline you need to have is to stick to the schedule and then you say oh how do i come up with this plan how do i know when i should finish if you know you have a deadline work backwards if you have a deadline work backwards when are you going to submit your paper all right and whenever you have a plan your timeline like i'm going to show you like this when I was a doctoral student, I had to do this. We have to write, do our timeline. So work backwards and then be generous with how much time you estimate. Don't say that, oh, I can finish chapter one in one hour or half a day. It, it, it's too short a time. So be generous with your time because things happen in life sometimes. As you plan, like I'm going to do half a day of introduction today and then something happens and you have to leave. So then it won't work for you. And then you have to continuously rescheduling your plan so try to be generous each time how much time you will need it's okay if you have extra time then you can put, do something else okay don't become over ambitious yeah that's another thing trying to finish writing especially within a short period of time we are always you know sometimes like, oh i can do this in half an hour sometimes writing is not that easy it takes time all right so develop a plan how you will approach writing from for all the different sections you have in your paper set deadlines all right when you're going to and maybe if you are going to submit your paper to your lecturer or to your advisor or to your co-author so set deadlines because some, these deadlines are actually very helpful all right um so make sure you you have um what do you call what things that you're going to write clearly shown so i have another uh, plan and schedule here so this is a calendar type so um what you have to do is make sure when you put it in your calendar don't just say that oh this is writing uh, like on say for example like here march uh, 22nd you're just going to say writing so if you just put in writing 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 if you're planning that way it doesn't work you need to put things clearly by saying today writing what am I doing? Choose topic. Uh, next time, day when I'm writing, preliminary research. You have to be specific. Don't just put in your calendar, writing, writing, writing with no goals. So you have to be specific. Put it down. Put down exactly what you're going to do. And make sure you commit to that time. Um, and, um, and if you just put writing, and I'll tell you, your mind will wander and you will not progress. And you don't even know, like if you say, oh, I have writing today, so what do I do today? You're going to procrastinate, you're going to waste your time. It's very important, you be very systematic and put down on each day, at least you know when you're going to complete your task. Now, if putting a writing plan, writing, having a writing plan and schedule, if this, this aligns with your personality, some people just don't like having calendars or having you know journals, they don't like. But if this aligns with your personality and your writer's sensibility, then do it. Tell yourself that you're going to sit down at X time, that means this specific time, and write for X number of hours or, you know, whatever time for a month or, you know, for a few months. And then see how it goes. You have to at least try it out. And maybe this is something new for some of you. Maybe some of you already have this. So if it's new, try it out to see whether it works. Even if you don't have to go for a month, try it out for a week. Will this work? Okay. Remember, much of... Um, writer's block is actually just to sit down you know sitting down and writing i know it's easier to say oh just sit down and write it is easier said than done um but you know there's many expert writers out there i don't know if you have read um john grisham's novels uh, i like his novels a lot he is a prolific writer uh, and he has talked about his writing routine i'm so glad he shared um, John Grisham is actually a lawyer, so he has a full day work Monday to Friday. And also he likes to write books. So what he does is he was so disciplined. He, he goes to his table at 5.30 in the morning and commits himself to write at least one page. All right, 5.30 in the morning because he goes to work at 8 something. So he needs to 
start at 5 30 in the morning he writes one page he grisham says yeah these rituals you know they, they seem silly and they are brutal but they are very important for you to move forward in your writing so put time on the calendar and commit to that time you don't have to come with ideas or inspiration but just show up just go and sit at the table and follow through okay um i will say i have tried uh, not at 5.30 in the morning, but I have tried having this plan and schedule and actually it helped me to get into a habit. I just, nowadays, I just don't even think about it. I just, you know, at this specific time and date, I'll just sit, I'll look at my computer, whether I'm typing or not, I'm just staring. Uh, or I look at my notes. And what happens usually within the time that I allocate for myself, I at least have one or two paragraphs done. So when I have written something, it actually makes me happy. So I would encourage you to try it and, you know, if you have my email address, you can let me know. Now, another way to, uh, to also overcome your writer's block, sometimes you're sitting there and looking like, what do I write about? What do I start with? First of all, you need to know what are the components and structures of the paper you have to write. See, you definitely know that if you're writing for a journal or if you're writing a dissertation or an assignment for your class, obviously, you know, you have to write the introduction, statement of the problem, methods, results, discussion. So make sure you know these components and don't try to work on all the components at once. So focus on different parts of your paper on different times, different day. So if today you say, okay, I'm going to focus on introduction, then pick on introduction. So if you think like, oh, I have two more days to finish my paper and you want to write the full academic in two more days, it's going to be overwhelming. And um, so it's very difficult to actually complete. But I also know of people who work under pressure. And if they know they have two more days to finish, somehow they will finish it, um, finish writing the paper. However, I'm going to recommend that, you know, know the components and set your sights on accomplishable tasks that means what can i finish today within this specific time so this way you can actually progressively get, get closer to your goal and i'll talk to you about uh setting your goals in this next slide so as i said just now so you if you set achievable goals you can actually overcome your writer's block so um like I said just now, don't plan to finish like, oh, I'm going to complete chapter one in one sitting in, in half a day. Kind of difficult that way. So um, it's important that you set realistic goals. They must be realistic. So for example, you say, I'm going to write for three hours every day at a scheduled time. That can be realistic, but three hours is actually very long to sit down. You should break it up. Okay. Uh, draft chapter one in one week. I think you can do that depending on how many pages you have to write, okay? So don't let your passion for finishing your dissertation cause you to push yourself so hard that the goals are simply not possible sometimes. So you cannot set goals like, you know, I'm going to finish my dissertation in one month. Maybe some people have. I may not have. I don't know, I couldn't finish my dissertation in one month. And some people say, I'm going to write 10,000 words in a day. You see, these are all difficult, especially if you have a full-time job or any other family commitments, then this is difficult. So setting reasonable goals will actually make it easier for you. And when you set your goals, make sure the goals are measurable. That means it has numeric values. So for example, like um, you will say that uh, I plan to write 200 words or two paragraphs or 500 words, you know, so you want to make sure that you have measurable goals so that you can actually track whether you have written 250 words or 500 words, you can track and check off as you go. And, um, and this way you can also estimate oh i think i can only write 500 words a day i cannot write more than that so you you yourself know that when you create the uh, another goal the next time you're able to um finish the task within that time period so if you write your goals um too vague oh i'm going to finish chapter one this week it's too vague and you cannot track your progress okay tracking progress is my next point is very important so uh usually to track your progress we use a calendar so you write your goals each day uh, and mark them off as you go. Um, you can also see if you say today, oh, I'm going to write uh, 
say five pages of something and you will know oh this is too ambitious i couldn't finish five pages today then next time you will like okay maybe i'll write two pages so you can make adjustments so um so, so you can actually make modification so that is why it's important that you put it on a calendar so you can um, see whether it's working for you and also be accountable so if you really want to achieve your goals you need to make them a priority so it, it, you have to prioritize. If you don't make that a priority, you've not committed, then any plans that you make will just, you know, you just lose sight of your goals. So um, this is another way of learning um, valuable time management skills. So, you know, sometimes you say, I'm not very good with time management. So this is one way to learn time management skills. Um, so, and it also when you're accountable, and you're actually dedicated and writing every day, you can actually identify uh, how much you can accomplish each time. So make sure you're 100% focused and also time bound to complete whatever you plan to do. Um, sorry, one more point there is to find your motivation. Uh, reward yourself. This is something I've learned in the US, rewarding. I think most times we don't reward yourself, like patting on your back. Oh, good job, you've done something. So whenever you set a goal, that is why it has to be achievable within a, size, a, a certain time period. Let's say today you sat down and you wrote for three hours. So reward yourself. What will be your reward? It doesn't have to be anything big, not like you have to go out and shop for something. Uh, it's like, OK, maybe I can watch TV. Maybe I can play a game. Maybe I can call a friend that I haven't called for a long time. Um, you know so those will be like short-term goals and then maybe you have completed something um, after a month then you say oh maybe i can go out and hang out with my friends for the weekend so you reward yourself so that's that in itself will actually motivate you to write okay so rewarding is actually very important so try to include that in your writing scheme your writing plan now sometimes writing is also interrupted or you also have writer's block because you don't have an appropriate physical space for writing so finding the best place where you can write is important. I'm sure you all already have a good place where you can write with no destruction, no interruption. For some people, the library is the best place, your home, your office, you know, your, you, you, you know your, your own locations. So when you're writing, when you have found this place where you are find, uh, writing, make sure you turn off your phone. You, uh, I don't know if you're very into much emails, like turn off your email notification so that you are really dedicated to your writing. You know, you're only turning it off for an hour or two or put it on a silent mode. And unless you really, really have to look at it in case there's an emergency, so then probably you probably want to peek at it. But, you know, if you can, try not to. So you also must make sure when are you productive during the day. If you are not a morning person, don't try to write in the morning. So if you, and also, you know, if you prefer to write at night, if you prefer to write in the afternoon or evening, so you find the right time. And also, if you are the type of person you cannot sit down and write for a long time, now we have all these uh, high race tables, so you can stand and write. So that's another option you have. Also, consider the temperature and noise around you. If you're uncomfortable, writing will become very hard. So if you are so distracted, it's almost impossible to write. So Put on comfortable clothes. Uh, if you cannot deal with quiet, some people don't like to write when it's quiet. Then you can turn on some music, light music, light noise. And also make sure the place where you're writing is decluttered. So make sure it's a bit tidy and neat because you know every time you look up at something and you see a pile of mess, you go like, oh, I'm seeing a wall. So I like this technique. It is called another way to uh, overcome uh, writer's block is to use the Pomodoro technique. All right. Uh, actually, it works. I like this technique very much. And I'd like to introduce this if you already know this before. But if you don't, I'd like to introduce this to you. Uh, developed by Francis, Francesco uh, Cirillo. Um, he claims that you know most people are productive in 25 minute blocks, followed by five minutes break. So during this time, like I said, don't let yourself to be interrupted by your phone or whatever. You can actually use your phone app. There's a productivity timer that you can download from an app store. So you can, you know, set the timer and then it will trigger once you're done with 25 minutes. So um, whatever you need to do, 
In these 25 minutes, sit tight and power through. After 25 minutes, take a five minutes break or you know, 10 minutes break that you have. So make sure during these 25 minutes, no email, no getting up. Oh, I need a little bit more of coffee. No, you don't do that. All right. Uh, the idea behind this technique is if you know you have only 25 minutes, you're focused. If you set a time like I have three hours, you will be like, um, in you you feel like you have more time to write that you are almost you like you want to check your email you want to check your phone or you want to walk around the house take something so you are not very productive so if you have 25 minutes you will not get up from your seat for 25 minutes and you become very productive so that's the whole idea but can you repeat the 25 minutes blocks yes you work 25 minutes take five minutes break or 10 minutes break and then you come back do another 25 minutes this will help you to also overcome your writer's block and you know after days and days or hours and hours of writing you get so tired so what you can do is like okay today i don't feel like writing i've been thinking so hard so you say like maybe i can do some editing of the parts that i have already written so then you can alternate between writing and editing so this way you can actually move your writing forward a little bit quickly so instead of sitting down like i don't feel like writing and i don't want to write so you know, you already planned that today you're going to write for half an hour, so might as well use the time for editing. So shifting gears in this way, it actually frees up your thinking and you find it easier to start writing again. Um, yeah. So, so sometimes you still have writer's block. No matter what you have done, you say like, hey, I need to look for inspiration and tips. I need to, you know, I don't know how to write anymore. So this way, what you can do is, uh, if you're really stuck and you do not know how to move forward, remember earlier I said that you have already decided to look to publish in a specific journal, or if you're writing a dissertation, read other academic papers or read other dissertations, other journals where you want to publish. All right. So it's good idea to read those to give you an idea on what the expectations of these journals are. And if it's even better if you look for journal articles or the dissertations that uses the same methodology, because it gives you pretty much a very good idea how to structure your paper. And if you really have no idea at all, like I don't know where, how do I find information? Now we have this latest information. I'm not sure the AI invention, how does that work in your place? We have not banned our chatbot, uh, the artificial int intelligence invention, we have not banned it here. So you can look for ideas in chat GPT. Now we have others, Bard, Bing. But remember, you cannot take, like how the previous presenter said, taking wholly from chat GPT will be considered plagiarism, although cannot be detected. Uh, but someone else who types the same question will have the same answers like you have. So make sure you paraphrase or cite chat gpt as your co-author so be responsible and you know have some integrity when you take that from chat gpt and um let's see so another way to overcome writer's block so he said okay today i don't feel like writing another way is like you can reach out to your co-authors or colleagues or your peers if you're in the phd program and you say that hey do you think you can take a look at my draft um and ask them for to give you some feedback. So on that day, you can actually work on the feedback. So, but they need to give you actionable feedback, meaning you need to ask them, be strategic. Okay, I want you to look at my methodology, my method section. All right, I want you to comment on, do you see if I have listed all the procedures and you can follow my steps? So if you tell them what to look for, then they can easily give you actionable feedback. Just simply giving feedback, you know, like, Oh, this is clear. This is unclear. Uh, I don't understand. This is not helpful feedback. So you want them to say, oh, I looked at your steps. I feel like there's one step missing somewhere between step three and step four. So that would be helpful. So you can actually ask your friends to read and give you feedback. But don't forget, you also have to return the favor when they are writing the paper. And um, another way, if you want to avoid that, another way is you can actually use professional services. Now, I like this. I, I joined this uh, writing group. You can actually create a writing group. You know, actually, it's very, very, uh, it's, you, you find that your peers and you are very supportive of each other. 
instead of writing alone, which can be a lonely process and boring process, so what you can do is you find some dedicated time uh, to with your friends. I know some of you will say, oh, if I sit with my friends, we will chit chat. No, you have to be, you know, you have to set the goals for writing group. So today we're going to spend half an hour or an hour on writing. And you can say, my goal today is to write this. Uh, I'm going to write the um, uh, purpose of the study. Another person will say, oh, I'm going to write the statement of the problem. So whatever it is that the task that they want, they have to set their goals and then start writing. So this way you can avoid the chit chatting. Um, and then what you can do is at the end of like, you know, allocate like 10, 15 minutes, if you like uh, 10, 15 minutes at the end, you say, okay, this is what I have written. Can you ask your friend to read and give you feedback? So that would be very helpful. So I participated in the 14 day writing challenge and this was online. So we were not sitting together, but we have to uh, log into Zoom. So this uh, for 30 minutes uh, for five days, Monday to Friday, 30 minutes, five days, we have to say. So five hours of productive work. And it was really good. I could write so much. You can try this. It's actually very interesting to have a writing group, just like how people have reading group. <clears throat> so um, those are tips on how you can actually uh, use uh, to overcome your writer's block. Now, there's another thing. I mean, I do have time, I guess. So there's another thing that we can do is using the writing process. All of us have writing process, nothing new about this. And how you can use your writing process work for you um, so that uh, you can overcome your writer's block. Um, no two people do it the same way. That means your writing process and my writing process may not be the same. And there's no right way or wrong way to write. So use the strategies that you feel comfortable with, OK? Um, if you are thinking that, you know, I'm just not good at writing. Some people are just talented. And when they sit alone, beautiful words just pour in, onto the page. If that's what you believe, I'm so sorry to tell you that is a myth. Even the best novelists who write, they also go through writer's block every time. So anyone can be a good writer with practice. And if you have a writing process, even better. So um, there's, uh, like as I've mentioned, no right way, no wrong way about it. So I'm going to introduce to you the writing process that we use in the United States. This has been introduced to uh, primary school students, secondary school students, and even college students. But as children grow up, you know, they modify the writing process. So this writing process actually has four distinct steps. You can actually have the fifth one. So we go through the writing process. At first, you need to plan, then draft, revise, edit. And the fifth one can be publishing. I'll walk you through each stage very quickly. Um, so when you say about planning, all of us, I'm sure you plan. You, you know, we all plan before we can write. So you can either have, I'm going to show you three types of uh, writing and outline. So one way is to list out, you know, in your planning stage, OK, now I'm going to plan to write my paper. So I'm going to use a listing strategy. So you generate your ideas, and then you put in your main heading, subheading, like I have it here, what is autism spectrum disorder? And then I list down all the things that is related to this. So this is a listing method. So when we do this way, we are actually working, we are actually researching, and you know you can avoid, you can actually avoid your, uh, overcome your writer's block. So you're not stuck. So because you have a planning, you're, you're working on something, not just sitting there and staring at something. Another method of planning is to use clustering. I, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with this, so I'm not really going to go into what this is about, like mind mapping. So put in your main subject, and then you start connecting the dots, and then you find that you can visually see what you're actually working on. And if you don't like to do this on paper, you know you can. there's a lot of uh, free websites that gives you the mind mapping tool. So that's another method to explore the relationship between ideas. And I think a lot of people like to do this. In fact, when I talk to my students, they say that they like the free writing method, meaning you start typing away your answers. You just start sitting down. You don't list. You don't have um, mind mapping. You just write whatever comes to your mind. And then after you've written it, then you go through your work, you underline or you highlight important points. And then the only trouble with this free writing is you have to rewrite the paragraphs again. So it's kind of like you spend a lot more time but some people just love the free writing. So that's another strategy. So this is all you use, like the listing method, the sorry, the listing method, 
the clustering method or the free writing method are some things that you can do in planning. So this is where you actually generate your ideas. OK, so now that you have generated your ideas, you have to do the drafting. You have to start writing your first draft. OK, um, <clears throat> so um, at this stage, you are just connecting all the ideas, taking everything. So say, OK, what am I have to how what do I have to write? You write in complete sentences, you put it in para paragraphs. The only thing you have to know is make sure that uh, you don't um, worry about grammar. Don't worry about spelling at this point because all you're trying to do is try to create a first draft. And you can pick and choose uh, which section of your journal article. Some people say, oh, I want to start with the introduction. Some people say, no, I'm going to do with the literature review. Like in my case, I like to start with the method section because I feel like the method's a little bit more technical and easier to write. So you can pick and choose whichever sections that you want to write first. But as long as you do your first draft, remember, your first draft is not your perfect draft. But based on my college students, they only do first draft. They, they won't care going back and fixing if they have to change anything. So actually, once you have done your first draft, you have to go back and re read what you have re uh, written. This is when you look critically at your first draft. So revision is definitely very important in the writing process. So you take a step back and um, you work with a critical eye. Look for ways to improve your sentence structure. But I also want to advise you this. Once, once you've written your first draft, give yourself a day or two before you look at the text again. Because if you look at it immediately, you will not find the mistakes. Because everything is in your head, you will see everything as the way it is. Try today, going back to your past assignments or past papers, try looking, read what you have written. And then you'll be going like, did I really write this? Oh my God, why did I even say that? So this is, this is when you can actually look with your critical eye. All right. So remember, when you're revising, you're still not interested in fixing your spelling or grammar. This is actually looking at whether you need to add new content or whether the content you have is inaccurate, you need to remove it or reorganize your ideas. That's what you're doing in this revising and redrafting. All right. Remember, writing is not a linear process. You have to go back and then go back to the planning stage. Oh, let me go back to my planning and see what, what ideas have I left in that planning paper, maybe I can bring that back in. So um, you have to go back and forth uh, several times before you get a final draft. OK, uh, I'm sure anyone here who has done a lot of writing, extensive writing, you will agree with me that revising, I mean, writing a paper is not like one time set and write from introduction and all the way to the end and then you're done. It's never perfect that way. And finally, you get into your editing and proofreading. So um, as I said before, don't bother proofreading or editing before. And this is the time where you fix things like your grammar, your sentence structure, your word choices, um, whatever things that looks ambiguous in your writing. So this is where you fix all the time. And also, if you have to follow a certain format, like APA format, this is when you fix it. Because you don't want to do APA format in the beginning, and then you find things change, and then you have to fix everything all over again. And one place where if you want to know, I don't know if my grammar is right, you can always use the free option of Grammarly. They do a pretty good job in uh, helping you to fix your, you know, they can proofread your work. That's done for free. OK, now coming back to a full circle, how do I overcome writer's block? So be besides the tips that I gave you, use the writing process that works for you. This is like planning, drafting, revising, and editing is something that we are trained here in the US to do. So whether if you like that way, you can. Some people don't like planning, they go into drafting. So you can choose whichever way you want to do. Or some people, they write the whole thing and then they say, OK, now I will revise. So you have many different ways how to write. So one of the best ways to overcome uh, the writer's block, I would say, is that using uh, a, a writing process. And sometimes, for some people, I hate writing process. Another way is just sit down and write. Like I said, easier said than done but you have to just sit down and write. I'm not sure if you're very familiar with this author of uh, some novels and short stories, Ernest Hemingway. Um, he said that all a writer needed to do to get started is to write one true sentence. That means you write one perfect sentence, you should 
get yourself started. So for Hemingway, this was a trick that he used to overcome his writer's blocks. I mean, he wrote so many novels and short stories, and he is having writer's blocks. As I said, everyone experiences writer's block. Even if you use bullet points to list information, just write down your thoughts. Getting words on paper is what is important, because after that, you have all these bullet points. You can come back and connect the ideas and form sentences or form paragraphs. Then you can organize your writing and polish your paper. So if you don't like, um, so you can, as I said, if you don't like the writing process, you can find your own way of how you want to do it. Um, if you don't like rewriting, spend more time planning. All right. If you don't like planning, uh, do your work differently. So there's no just one way to do it. They just, you know, there are any styles that you have, you can do it that way. So here's my concluding thought. If you are having trouble sitting down to write, think, take comfort in knowing that you're not alone. Remember, you're not alone. We have all been there. So however, this cannot become a habit. If you want to publish in journals, then you need to write. And that means figuring out your writer's block. So with that, I end my presentation and I welcome any questions you have for me today. Thank you. I think I should exit this. And how do I get back? Ah, here it is. Any questions for me? Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, your presentation, your presentation was so good, and I what? have uh, taken screenshots because it will definitely help me to do my course. Look, I just started my uh, research, so it is like you are, you are like a guiding light for me. Oh so my God! I thank have, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I learned a lot from you. Again, I will have to go through all the screenshots and I will make notes, and it will help me a lot. I hope that. So really, it was so wonderful, ma'am. Mm -hmm, Thank okay. you so much for your presentation. Oh, you're welcome. If you have any questions, I'm happy to. Uh, I don't know. Did I put my email address anywhere up here? No, I didn't. I don't know if I did no, have it. No. In, I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. No. I, I actually do have. Um, I don't know where. Email ID, ma'am? Uh, my email ID, if you have. I don't know. There's no chat session here, is there? No. Yeah, okay. it, is, uh, it is disabled, oh. ma'am. Yeah, that's right. Um, yes, if you share your mail ID, it will be helpful for us. <laughs> okay, if, if you have you... any doubt in, if you have, definitely, actually, I started uh, with the uh, journal publication. Really, I'm stuck up with uh, what to write and how to uh, continue with uh, my, I have some ideas, but I don't know how to uh, know, collaborate all those ideas into a paper. So definitely, I'm uh, puzzled. I'm at that beginning uh, stage. So I think if I if we uh, uh, if I need any help in the sense I can uh, email it and I can get suggestion from you. I hope. Ma. Okay, it's but my if you last. Your mail ID. Yeah, if you can see on the screen, it's my last name. It's I think my name is on the PowerPoint slide. Last name, J A G A I A H at Hartford dot edu. If you can see that. Um, can, you, can, you, can you? Can you? Mom, it is not. I cannot see that, ma'am. Okay. Can you uh can you spell it again so that I can note it down? Okay. J A G A I A H. G A G A I A H. Jagaya. I A A H. At 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 Hartford. H A R T. Ma, sorry, ma'am. H a R uh -huh, R T uh -huh, A R T F O R D F O R T uh -huh. Let me you know what I'm gonna do uh at uh, uh sorry sorry yeah, yeah. for interrupting oh. yes uh, first page of the mail yeah 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 I see the first page has the email can you see this can you see this PowerPoint um, slide? My email address is there. I was thinking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma we can okay, see. I'll take the right. screenshot. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's you, ma'am. OK. Sorry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I got it. OK, good. Hello, ma'am. Hello. 
Okay. Uh, can you give so can you give give me a specific idea? I Means uh, how much time on uh, to read and uh, write? I Means because uh, writing comes from reading. So how much time we have to give for reading and uh, writing? How, okay. How to manage the time for reading and yeah. writing? Time management skills, right? So I don't know if you are planning to write for your dissertation or is it for journal article? So if it's for a dissertation, you, I think you're constantly reading on a daily basis, like you're reading uh, articles in the area of research that you're doing. So you should allocate time for reading. I mean, I do not know how quick a reader you are, how quickly you understand the articles. Uh, so you have to know, you see, everybody does it differently. Just because I can read in one hour doesn't mean you can read in one hour. Maybe you can read in half an hour and understand the text quickly. So you have to allocate. How quickly can you read a journal article of 40 pages, for example, or 30 pages? I do not know how long your journal articles are. So what are the sections you want to read? Sometimes we don't read the whole article. I'm just reading the literature aspect of it. Oh, I'm just looking at the results of that journal. So I'm not sure. Oh, if you're reading textbooks, usually we are not reading textbooks in a, in, in a scholarly work. So usually if you're reading uh, journal articles that have been published. So like me, if I'm just focusing on results, I think one paper, one article, I will spend like 15 minutes. I just want to understand the results of this study. And then I make notes. So I can allocate, say, maybe I can say in one hour, I'm going to read two articles. If I can do it, half an hour, half an hour. And remember, it's very overwhelming. We are doing serious work, and everything that we are reading is highly intellectual, very complex. And also, how familiar you are with the area. The more familiar you are, the faster you understand, the quickly you can finish reading and making notes. But if you are new to this topic, then it takes longer. So what you should do is, Try experimenting yourself. Take one journal article, set your timer, read. I do not know if you want to read the whole article or you're reading just one section or here and there and see how much time you're using. If you're using just 15 or 20 minutes, then you say, OK, I think I can. I just need 20 minutes to read. And then I make notes. Um, make notes, that means you're planning, you know, where you either listing the idea or you're making mind maps. So you do that. So you have to identify yourself how much time you need. And you know, to do this is very, very tiring every day. I do not know how much time you have, how much free time you have in a day. If you have longer free time, then maybe you can use one hour, work on it one hour, take a 20 minutes break, come back to it another one hour, you can do that. If you just have two hours in the whole day to do reading and writing, then you can split your reading to half an hour, writing half an hour. And then take a break, come back, read another half an hour and one uh, another half an hour. So it's a it's, it's, it's a time management depending on how much time you have. If you have more specific question, like I have only one hour, what can I do? Then I can also answer that. See, I'm having trouble in a for uh, a continuation. I do for one uh, one day, two day, but for a week, for a month, I'm having very much trouble. I'm just, I, I have been in that shoe, so I'm not judging. Don't worry. We all have, yes, to continue. That is why. So you have to, you see, it's difficult because, as I said, very hard to think every day, very hard to, like, you know, use your, you know, your cognitive processes every day. It's very hard. So you have to plan it out. So I would say, if, are you doing a journal, a manuscript, or are you doing a dissertation or uh, thesis? Uh a dissertation okay a dissertation right so you have chapters one two three four five such huge chapters so let's say if you are focused on chapter one right now uh i usually start with chapter three i don't start with chapter one because i think chapter three is the one that gives the information to chapter one and, and chapter two as well chapter two chapter three is the one that gives information to all the other chapters so um if you already know your research question, you already know what's the problem in the area, then you can start writing. So you will say like, OK, I'm going to start focusing on statement of the problem today. Like I told you just now, break it down. Break your task smaller. Don't do huge tasks. Very difficult. And today, you've already spent one hour writing. It's not like reading a book. People can read a book half a day, never get tired. But writing half a day, you will get tired. So allocate small time and you wrote today you wrote tomorrow third day you don't want to write maybe you can take a break if you have time if you cannot take a break you have to then say okay what can i do reward yourself 
maybe you can say that if I if I can write and at least one hour today I will get to eat something nice I don't know you reward yourself you have to do motivation you won't believe when I had to do my PhD that's the only time I reward myself by watching movies I watch movies after movies after movies because I needed that motivation if I, I look for a nice movie and then I say oh my god I really want to watch that movie then I say but I have to write if only when I finish this task, I can watch that movie. But again, I don't watch the full movie. I watch like half an hour. I stop. And then I said, now I have to write again. And then I can continue watching the movie. So this is the reward system is the one that can actually push you. Otherwise, organize a group. If you are doing dissertation, I believe you have friends. You don't have to meet in person. You can also do online. In fact, my colleague and I, she has also presented here before. We do this uh, group create uh, writing. So you sit on the other side of your laptop, I sit on the other side of the laptop, and then no talking, we just say, hi, how are you doing? And that's it, one sentence, two sentences, and then focus on writing. If I don't know something, then I say, can I interrupt you? I, I want to, I have this question, I do not know how. But we don't interrupt in between, we interrupt only towards the end, once we are already tired of writing. So you need to have uh, support from friends if working with you. Sometimes working, I know writing alone is very boring. I get, I find that I don't like, I hate writing alone. I want company. If you want to write at the same time I'm writing, I'm fine. I can keep you company too. <laughs> we can work on Zoom. Thank you, ma'am. The reward system, I think, is the best. I'll just try it after third day. You should, you should. As I said, reward yourself, find friends if you need to. Otherwise, find some kind of motivation to write. You, if you cannot write, if you write the whole full day, you are tired. Then, of course, the next day you don't want to write. I, I can understand that. Actually, consistency is a basic problem for me for reading and writing too. Yeah, yeah. Sure. As I said, you find a friend, find a friend, or um, reward yourself. That will be a good strategy. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for very informative talk. Dear participants, we are moving to third session. Our speaker is Professor Sunil Goel, Dean and Chairman, Board of Studies, School of Social Sciences and Management and School of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University of Social Sciences, Dr. Ambedkar Nagar, Indoor, Madhya Pradesh, India. Now I invite mm -hmm. Professor Dr. Sunil Goel. I hand over the session to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude and thanks to the organizer of this three days international virtual workshop, Dr. Frank Joyson Satya, the president of Lavender Literary Club, Dr. R.S. Regin Silvist. And the organizers especially would like to <clears throat> congratulate and express my deep gratitude to Lavender Literary Club, Cape Comorin Trust, Malaysian Industrial Relations and Human Resources Association of Malaysia for giving me this opportunity <clears throat> to share my views, to share thoughts, to share my presentation, to share this learning module before you which is <clears throat> publishing your manuscript, how to publish your manuscript. My dear friends, a lot has been said by my previous learned speaker, Hilaga Jagaya, about how to write, how to design your manuscript, what all you should take care, how could you motivate yourself? How could you inspire yourself while writing a manuscript? <clears throat> I would like to share my views. I would like to share my ideas with you on how to publish your manuscript. <clears throat> I'm sharing my screen with you. I hope uh, my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, friends, let us start. What are the guidelines?
for publishing your script. The manuscript may be a report, manuscript may be a dissertation, manuscript may be a thesis, manuscript may be a research paper, manuscript may be a research article. Friends, I am Professor Sunil Goel, working as Dean, Professor, Chairman, Board of Studies, School of Social Sciences and Management, and also looking at School of Agriculture and Rural Development at Dr. B.R. Ambedkar University of Social Sciences. Dr. Ambedkar Nagar Mahau District Indore, Madhya Pradesh. <coughs> so, my dear respected um, mm, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, now you have decided, you have decided to write, or you have maybe some of you may have already written a research paper, already written an article, maybe you have already uh, written your dissertation, maybe you have already written your PhD research report. What is the next step? The next step is how exactly you are going to get this thing out to people. How to the big question before you, how to disseminate this knowledge, how to disseminate your research for the benefit of the mankind, for the benefit of the researchers, for the benefit of the whole research fraternity. Because, because, my dear friends, what's the use of writing? A paper, what's the use of writing? What's the use of doing a research? What's the use of doing a dissertation? What's the use of uh, doing a PhD research work if you can't share it with the citizens, the common cities of the country to for whom you have done this research or with the research fraternity or with the researchers in general? Um, so that they can be benefited out of uh, uh, your research work. <clears throat> My dear friends, to publish means what? What is mean by publishing? It means to make information. It means to make this literature available for the public to see, to view, to read. to further the knowledge in that field. And this publication, this publishing, involves the process <coughs> of producing, process of distributing literature so that the public can have access to it. Very, very important. My humble request to each one, please get it published on an open access platform so that it can be available for the general public as a whole. It can be available for the researchers across the globe. It can be available for the research fraternity across the world. This is, this is what is very, very important when you are concerned with disseminating your research findings, disseminating your conclusions. <clears throat> as far as traditional meaning of publishing is concerned traditionally we used to publish we used to publish in print media in newspapers in books in magazines in journals on paper and distributing the reprints actually they that they were known as reprints to the members of the research fraternity one thing, my dear friend, please keep this in mind. That is being increasingly considered by the publisher when accepting the manuscript is the sailing power of not only of the story, but you as an author. This is what is very, very important. <clears throat> please do the manuscript. Please focus on the manuscript which answered with the general public as a whole, which have selling power, very, very important, which have readers, which have researchers to read upon. It can be a story, not, not, not only a story, but you as an author, how do you see, how do you focus? 
you as an author, what is the selling part? That it is what is very, very important when. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, will you please maximize your screen? I have already maximized this, ma'am. Some someone from admin side is doing this. What yes, a face uh, thing. Yeah, someone from admin side. Please, please. Joyson cannot will you please talk? Someone from admin, admin side is doing something. One second, sir, please. Would like to understand admin, please. Do not Yeah, please can yeah, please can you, sir. No, again, again, it is not coming now. Full screen is not coming. <clears throat> let me stop sharing and once again, uh, will, yeah. Yeah, let yes, me stop please, sharing. please, sir, please. Okay. Is this visible now? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, to get your manuscript published when you are approaching a publisher with your book, have a section dedicated essentially to how are you going to sell work? Why? 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 It it should it should increase. It should answer to the publisher why you should get this published. Very, very important. Because, because you as an author, what you have written may be a story, may be a research paper, may be an article, may be a dissertation, may be a book. How are you going to sell this work? Why this work is important for the research fraternity? Why this work is important for readers? How this book, how this publication will find the readers, which is very, very important as far as publisher is concerned. That, that this question is to be answered by you as an author. Very, very important. And as such, my dear friend, the goal of my today's learning module, which I have prepared for you all, respected ladies and gentlemen, is an attempt to acquaint you with the basics of publishing process. And as such, the objective of my today's learning module is to understand, is to let you understand what, why, and how of academic publishing. And I hope after going through this learning module, you will be able to understand various aspects, various concepts which are related with academic publishing. <clears throat> so as such, I have divided my uh, this learning module to various parts. First, we'll deal how do I know if I am a good writer? Very, very important. How do you know? That you are a good writer, whether what you have written has a selling power. How would you be able to know this? How is he is it to get published? International standards of writing. What are the international standards of writing? What is being actually expected by the international publishers from you as an author are you following these international standards of writing or not we'll talk something about isbn issn we'll talk about citation index we'll talk about impact factor because because these this virtual workshop international virtual workshop is on publication in high impact journal we'll talk about the peer review process we'll talk about the indexing process we'll talk about plagiarism in short we'll talk about the research ethics we'll talk about the publication publishing process steps and descriptions <clears throat> friends let us start with how do i know if 
I am a good writer. Let us see. You know, everybody knows, everybody used to tell himself, I am the best writer, I am the good writer. But, but my friends, ask yourself whether you have finished what you have started. Very, very important. What, what is being said, especially by Ma'am Jagaya? You should, you should finish what you have started. And maybe, okay, so maybe you haven't finished that novel yet. But, but my dear friend, you can, you can. I can do it. Have a feeling I can do it. I'm the best. God is with me. You should have the feeling of that. Then only you can finish what you have started word by word finish what you start writing don't care how long it takes because my dear friends respected ladies and gentlemen writing is not a race You win simply by reaching the end. What you have started, if it is finished, that means, that is self means you are the winner, you are the champion because you have reached the end. You have finished what you have started. That is what is very, very important. And this takes you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, to the winning stage. This makes you a winner. This makes you a champion. How easy is it to get published? Is it very easy? How easy is uh, The simple answer is very, very difficult. Because this publishing your book, publishing an article, publishing a research paper, distinction, this is, this is a time-taking task. And finding the right publisher, choosing the right publisher will, however, make it quick and less time consuming. You have to choose. You have to find out. Which is the best publisher for my manuscript? It is the right publisher for my manuscript. You have to choose. You have to find out. That's, that's a task. Now coming to the international standards of writing. What are the international standards of writing? Please keep this in mind. I know, ma'am Jagaya has already spoken on this. But to revise, because we are concerned with getting our writings published with international publishers. For that, it is very, very important. If we choose the style of writing. It should be international standards. It should be the international standards. It's most, most social scientists. Students of social science, they use American cycle. They use the style which is being, um, uh, which uses as a guide given by American Psychological Association, APA style, American Sociological Association, Turabian, Chicago, Harvard, Modern Language Association. You, you must use, please keep this in mind. First, go and read the guidelines. These are, these are all available online. See the latest version. See the latest edition. What they say, how to write. Because, my dear friends, writing is a science. How to write? How to write a paragraph? How to write the abstract? How to write the keywords? How to write the research problem? How to design the research problem? How to write your name? <clears throat> uh, 
how to write the body of your research paper how to write the references how to write the bibliography how to write the end notes how to write review of literature very very important please please my humble request please go through the guidelines so that you are up after finishing your work you are being accepted internationally that's what is very very important now coming to isbn because i am going to publish publishing means what isbn are assigned to modus books isbn are assigned to each separate book of the series please keep this in mind this is isbn the international standard book number this is a unique numeric commercial book identifier based upon the nine digit standard book numbering code created by john gordon foster emeritus professor of statistics please please because all the books all the monographs are assigned isbn this is a unique numerical commercial book identify number this is this is like this <coughs> now coming to issn issn are assigned to serial publications please keep this in mind serial publications and issn can be a series of monographs also iss means international standard serial number this is a unique eight digit number used to identify a print or electronic periodical periodical publication for print uh, you uh, it is being used as pissn for electronic you use e i s s n <clears throat> the periodicals because this periodicals nowadays are published in both print print form and electronic form print form has p i s s n and electronic form has e i s s n uh, the i s s n system was first adopted as an i s international standard in 1971 this is like this <clears throat> now coming to citation index everybody nowadays is concerned with citation index what is this citation index because when you write a research, you write a research paper when you write an article this becomes very very important because nowadays nobody is concerned about how many publications you have the scientific community the research fraternity is concerned with the citation index my dear ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> because the citation index is a kind of bibliographic database an index of citations between publications allowing the user to easily establish which later document cite which earlier documents very very important that's why this is very very important the first citation i says were legal citators such as shaffer citation 1873 1960 eugene garfield's institute of scientific innovation isi introduced first citation index for papers published in academic journals first the science citation index sci later the social science citation index ssci and arts and humanities citation index ahci the first automated citation index was done by citeseer in 1997 other sources for such data include google is called includes scopus now 
how to write citations very very important how to write because this is a science writing is a science it is a systematic process how to write this citations very very important when you are writing citations in the text please please go through this very very minutely because this is what is very very important when you are citing one work by a single author let us say you are citing smith this this was published year of publication is 1983 smith right smith give a space right in bracket the year of publication 1983 and write what he has found compared reaction times or can write as such in a recent study of reaction time it was found that dash 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 right in bracket right smith comma 1983 bracket closed or you can write as such in 1983 smith compared reaction times dash 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 this is how citations are written in the text what i was talking about how to write review of literature you have to write in this manner this is the scientific style of writing and this is this and why why this is important because this is accepted worldwide this is accepted internationally excuse me like to reply please mute yourself now if you want to write one work by three or more authors in that there was only one author smith 1983 now you want to cite a work which is having three or more authors cite authors the first time the reference occurs in subsequent citations include only the surname of the first author followed by E T space A L at all. E T A L point not a nine and with no period after E T and the year. Very very important. This is how you can cite three or more authors. <clears throat> My dear friends, citations a part of the text used then. When citing in parenthesis, use symbol. this is this is how you can give first citations this is how uh, william comma jones smith comma bradner comma and torrington 1983 found this is how first citation can be given or you can give researchers keep this in bracket william jones smith bradner and torrington 1983 found or in subsequent citations you can write williams et at space al dot space into it 1983 found this is what how to write the subsequent citations this is method how to write the citations because you want to publish internationally because you want to write for the international journals because you want to write for the international publishers you want to get your published internationally this this for this it is very very important to write your citations in the scientific style now coming to impact factor what is meant by impact factor the impact factor often abbreviated as if what is this impact factor this impact factor is a measure reflecting the average number of citations very very important please keep this in mind 
please look in your diary this is a major reflecting the average number of citations two recent articles published in science and social science journal how to calculate it i have a formula also how to calculate because the impact factor as you all i have already told this was devised by Eugene Garfield, the founder of Institute of Scientific Information, right? now part of Thomson Reuters. How to calculate impact factor in a given year? Please, please read it really carefully. In a given year, the impact factor of a journal is the average number of citations received per paper published in that journal during the two preceding years i am reading this again for you my dear friends average number of citations received per paper published in that journal during the two preceding years very important for example i have given this example also if a journal has an impact factor of 3 in 2008, what does it mean? Because on the top page, on the front page of the journal, this carries journal having impact factor of 3. Means what? It means it's papers published in the year two preceding years 2006 and 2007 received three citations each on an average in 2008 that means the 2008 impact factor of the journal will be calculated as follows please please look at this formula a upon b a, a is what the number of times articles published in 2006 and 7 were cited by index journal during 2008 divided by the total number of citable items published by the journal in 2006 and 2007 very simple very simple and what is mean by citable items citable items maybe articles maybe reviews maybe proceedings maybe notes but not editorials or letter to the editors the formula for impact factor will be a upon b where a is <clears throat> the number of times articles published in 2006 and 2007 were cited by index journal during 2008 divided by divided by what total number of citable items published by that particular journal in 2000 and 2007 <clears throat> this is this is what how to calculate this impact factor now coming to the most important thing this publishing process is peer review process what is meant by peer review process peer review does the same thing for science that is inspected by you see you see whatever fact you used to buy from the market used to purchase from the market this is having seal inspected and found okay correct inspected by and this this inspected by word provides you an assurance that someone someone is there some supervisor is there some someone a person expert is there who knows what they are doing has double checked it who knows if what is being required by the uh, company it has 
everything what is being required by that company what is being required by the customer this is this is what is peer review and in science peer review typically works something like this it means number one a group of scientists completes a study and write it up in the form of an article they submit it to a journal for publication all all we what we used to do we used to submit a paper after writing a paper after writing an article after writing a dissertation we used to submit it to a group of uh, to some journal some publisher then what he does the journal editors send the articles to several scientists who work in the same field that is the peers of peer review process if that journal particular journal is a single blind single reviewed journal it means that article or a paper will be sent to one expert one expert scientist one expert subject expert in the same field for review for peer review it means single blind peer reviewed this paper doesn't contain the name and affiliation of the author thank for peer review if it's double blind peer review it means that paper that particular paper is being sent to two sub experts two expert scientists who work in the same field for peer review this means like that this is this is what peer review process and those and those review they provide in turn they provide the feedback on the article on the paper and they tell the editors whether or not they think the study is of high enough quality to be published they recommend this paper is suitable for publication this paper is of high standard and this research will be important for the readers and they recommend this study to be published this is what a peer review process and authors may then revise their if these peer reviewers recommend some revision in the paper the editor particular editor of the journal they send that paper again to the author to revise that ticket to revise that paper as per the recommendation made by peer reviewers and resubmit it for the consideration resubmit it for the publication and my dear friends the articles that meet good scientific standards that is articles which rely on logical reasoning are well designed studies well designed scientific studies are accepted for publication this this, this is this is a picture coming before you this is how peer review process works this is this is the way the peer review process because we must know when we are going to publish a paper when we are going to publish an article when we are going to publish a book but the question remains why why peer review is important the question remains unanswered why this is important because peer reviewed articles provide a trusted form of scientific communication it increases the trust the readers know that the article which they are reading 
has already been peer reviewed is they have already been reviewed by at least two science at least two subject experts and even if you are unfamiliar with the topic even if you are unfamiliar with the scientist who have author who have written that paper it still provides your trust because this journal this uh, this publication is peer reviewed publication peer reviewed work that means it 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 has certain standards of science quality it follows the procedures it follows the process of writing an article scientifically this is what is very very important this increases the trust that's why my dear friends peer review is very very important and no scientist no writer no researcher would want to base their own work on someone else unreliable study because you as a researcher if if someone is special someone is there some uh, conclusion is there some uh, you say some result is there which can be quoted for further research this peer reviews gives a trust trust that this is this meets the standard of science trust that our scientific process has been followed trust that the writing is based on scientific study this gives you a trust that's why my dear friends peer review is important and please believe me this peer review is not just a science many fields out of science many fields out of pure sciences and applied sciences they use peer review to ensure quality because ensuring the quality what you are publishing before publishing you have to ensure the quality and ensuring quality means a lot to publishers it gives you a trust it increases the trust of the readers that's why every publisher is concerned with ensuring the quality of the published articles that's what is all about my dear friends peer reviewing why peer review is important what is the process of peer reviewing now coming to indexing what in by indexing how can i get my journal indexed because nowadays every researcher want to get his paper article published in indexed journal had the question before me if i am a publisher the question before me is how to get my journal published and you know typically you know typically to get yourself indexed to get your journal index you have to submit a formal application to the database because indexing in a database database of a international agency if you want to get your journal included in international database and provide relevant documents and evidence supporting its application and if you as a publisher of the journal meets all the criteria your journal gets indexed you have to you have to you have to meet all the criteria you have to follow the guidelines 
and you have to make a formal application and get your journal indexed in that particular database database of international agencies for example directory of open access journals d o a j a j this is an international database international platform and everyone everyone wants every journal wants to get themselves indexed in doaj it has it has a process they have their own terms and conditions you have to you have to meet all those terms and conditions all those criteria in order to get your journal uh, getting indexed now the question before us why what does journal indexing means what is what it means what is meant by getting your journal indexed my dear friends ladies and gentlemen an index is a list of items pulled together for a purpose for a purpose means these are the list these are the bibliographic indexes these are the database of journals organized by the subject disciplines organized by the type of publication and the journals those who are those which are indexed they are considered of higher quality than the journals that are not indexed which is very very important now what are the conditions for indexing let us see let us see these conditions also the minimum minimum requirement this is the minimum requirement number 1 it should have issn it should have digital object identifier every article every paper must have a doi digital object identifier an established publishing schedule the journal which you want to get it indexed in a particular database they want that you should have a publishing schedule a copyright policy basic article level metadata you should have these these are the minimum conditions which are being required to get your journal indexed which indexing of a journal is the best now now let me these 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 are these are the best indexing platforms you can index your journal in google scholar everybody is aware about google scholar you can get it indexed in scopus you can get it indexed in pubmed you can get it indexed in f you can get it indexed in ij impact factor you can get it indexed in ambes you can get it indexed in doaj you can get it indexed in isi index these these all platforms these all databases are considered the best as far as scientific journals are concerned that please see before submitting your article before submit your paper for publication please see that particular journal is indexed in any of this databases or not what is scopus because everyone nowadays wants their paper to be published in scopus index journal what is scopus index because this 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 is again a database or the scopus list of journals consist of indexed publication that are either serial or not serial examples of serial publication journal annuals such as reports yearbooks directories and book series and these are assigned an issn these these why because we want to get it published now a short 
about plagiarism because this is very very important every publisher now is required to check for the plagiarism of the uh, papers of the articles which they are receiving for publishing because plagiarism this is the use of another person's ideas you all know because a lot has been spoken about this in this two days virtual platform on this um, um workshop on research publications research writing if you are not giving proper credit it means it is a plagiarism you are using another person's ideas you are using another person's word without giving credit it means it is plagiarism plagiarism can occur when you use someone else exit word without giving them credit taking credit for someone else ideas or even presenting your own word as a new idea this is what is plagiarism and my dear friends academic institutions nowadays take both intentional and unintentional plagiarism very seriously and it can be the grounds for dismissal because please see all academicians please see because because these nowadays academic institutions are taking this plagiarism very very research ethics research disciplinary inquiry that aims to contribute to body of knowledge or theory ethics means respecting and protecting rights and dignity of the people ethics means moral principles of right and wrong what is considered right what is considered wrong this is this is what is ethics and ethics are not absolute may vary by person they may vary by time they may vary by place to place and ethics are the principles which are in tension with each other incorporating ethical principles into research practice this is a must nowadays every pre phd course which you are doing research uh, reading this understanding the concept of research ethics is a must publication ethics must because this research ethics this involves this involves a balance this involves a balance between and within the principles and practice and research ethics is there at all the stages research ethics are there with all those involved right from the inception of research to the completion to the publication of the result and beyond this this is what is research ethics and why why research ethics why why we are talking about research ethics why during publication we are concerned with research ethics because it is concerned this research ethics means you are protecting the data you are protecting the human rights you are concerned with the public about limits of inquiry intellectual property rights you are concerned with whistle blowing plagiarism this is why this is why research ethics is important and the obligation of researchers what are the obligations researchers as a researchers i am having some obligations to society i am having because i am having obligation to fund providers i am having obligation to my employers i am having obligation to my colleagues i am having obligation to the subject also if as far as obligation to the society is concerned it means widening the scope of the research conflicting interest pursuing objectivity obligations to the fund providers obligation to employers it means clarifying roles and obligations assessing alternatives impartially guarding the privileged information obligation to colleagues obligation to my fellow members it means maintaining confidence on research exposing review methods 
exposing, reviewing findings, communicating ethical principles, ensuring safety, ensuring minimizing risk of harm to field researchers. Obligation to subjects means avoiding intrusion, values and sense of privacy, obtaining informed consent, very, very important. Obligation to sub means obligation to the respondents from whom I am collecting the information, whom I am interviewing, from whom I am collecting the data, from whom I am collecting the facts. You have to protect the interest of these respondents very very important because you have obligation to subjects enabling participation you have to enable them to participate without any hesitation maintaining confidentially the record preventing disclosure of identities this is what is obligation to the society. This is what is obligation to the researchers. This is what is obligation to the colleagues. Now coming to authorial ethics. There are, there are many problems, a lot of problems. Copying, problems of manipulation, distortion, citations, unrelated carelessness. But the norms you have to follow avoid already said by my previous speakers avoid multiple submissions avoid duplication duplications avoid ghost authorships copyright very very important conference presentations code of ethics please do follow these things you have to follow the norms you have to follow the ethical principles honesty objectivity integrity carefulness openness you have to be, as an author, you have, you have to have a respect for intellectual property rights. You have to have respect for confidentiality. You are responsible for what you have written, what you have published. Responsible mentoring, respect for the colleagues. These are all ethical principles, social responsibility, not discrimination, competence. Legality, animal care, human subjects protection. Now coming to the publication. Now what is in your hand, my dear friends, my dear ladies and gentlemen. You may have a research paper. You may have an article. You may have a report. You may have a proposal. And what for, for whom you have written? Maybe, maybe, my dear friends, you are written for a journal. You want to get this paper published into a journal. You want to publish your article in a newspaper. You want to uh, g uh, get your manuscript published in book form, in a monograph form. You want to get this piece as a module. As an e-content, you want to upload this on the website of a... Um, mm, you see a scientific journal, website of a scientific organization. You have prepared a module. You have to report to the authority, etc., etc. You have written for uh, uh, your superiors, for your boss. You have prepared a report for your boss. Prior communication and permission. You have to see all these things. ISBN, ISSN, Citation Index, Impact Factor, Journal, Newspaper, Book, Monograph, Module, Report to Authority, etc., etc. You have to take permission from your organization because obligation per the employers. Please, my humble request with each and everyone who is attending this virtual workshop please do take permission 
if you are publishing an article, if you are publishing a paper, if you are publishing a book, if you are publishing a monograph, if you are writing a module, getting it uploaded on the website, do take permission from your employer. Maybe, maybe you have, your university might be having Office of Research Integrity. Do take permission from the Dean, Office of the Research Integrity. This is what is very, very important prior communication and publish and permission. Now, the publication process, steps and description. What is your publication process? Send your proposal. You may send your proposal to a publisher that this is this, this, this is my publication. This is this is my writing and I want to publish with you. Do write the selling power. Why? Why it is important for you, a publisher, to publish my writing. What is important? What is peculiar? What is significance of this writing? Why this writing will find the readers? How? How? How it will find the readers? Because publishers are concerned with selling their books, selling their publications. How they will be finding the readers or the buyers or the customers? Peer review results, acceptance and price quote, language, copy editing, technical editing, and type state proof. This is what is publication procedure, publication process, the step by step publication process. They may send an acceptance letter. Price quote, they may quote a price. Now the stage is language copy editing. The stage is technical editing. Now the type set. Now the it is being typed. Now it is ready for proofreading. You have to go through the proof, invoice payment, online publication, print, and delivery of the book. Maybe an online online publication or maybe a publication in the print form. After getting it printed, you will get the delivery of the book. Or maybe you are finding a journal to get your research paper published. You have to identify journals during literature search while reviewing your literature. Keep searching the journals, the most competent journals. which can publish your papers, which can publish your articles. You can visit their website. You can go on reading the aims and scopes. Go through the editorial board. Review examples of their recent articles which have been published, recent papers which have been published. Choose one primary target and several secondary very very important line my dear friends when you are finding a suitable journal for getting your paper published very very important choose one primary target and several secondary target some tips from my side humble request humble tips Having several journals with similar audiences and formats facilitate turnaround. Why, why, why I write, I have written choose one primary target and several secondary because having chosen several journals, similar audiences, similar for, format, this facilitates turnaround for you if you are being rejected by the first. Because you have already chosen, already seen several secondary options. Also. If you are being rejected by the primary one, see the number two, which is on your list, number two. Send that article to number two. 
Now it's a general process. Editor decides whether to send for the review. Peer reviewers are being assigned to review that particular article or paper. Decision. Decision by the peer reviewers whether to accept, whether to reject, whether to revise, whether a resubmission is required. And one very important quote, my dear friends. Prospective authors should not be disheartened if a manuscript is rejected or needs extensive rewriting. This is the rule rather than the exception. Please keep this quote in your mind while sending your article to the particular journal for publication. Responding to reviewers, you review. You received the pulse of the reviewer. Read it carefully. Take a deep breath. Consult your co authors. Prepare a response table. And, my dear friends, reviews may sometimes appear to be arbitrary. Reviews may sometimes appear you to be unfair, poorly performed. However, however, it is a reviewer's job to be critical and there may be elements of truth in even the most negative reviews please keep this in mind when you are answering to the reviewers and an international edit says The following problems appear too frequently. Submission of papers which are clearly out of scope. That's why I have written, do read the aims and scope of that particular journal. You are sending a paper to that journal which is, the, uh, which is out of scope of that particular journal. And you are sending them papers. It will be outrightly rejected because they are out of the scope of that particular journal. Failure to format the paper according to the guide for authors. Do read, do, do go to guidelines for the authors. You have to meet, you have to write your paper according to these guidelines. Inappropriate or no suggested reviewers. Adequate response, inadequate response to reviewers inadequate standard of english resubmission of rejected menace without revision many researchers are doing like this multiple submissions not allowed Duplicate submissions not allowed because there are chances that you may be listed. You will not be allowed to send the papers in that particular journal. The editor will blacklist you. And multiple submissions considered unethical. Duplicate publications are considered unethical. And you should not send your manuscript to a second journal until you received a final decision of your first journal. The journal, the first one which you have sent, your article for publication. Until you received no from the first journal, you are not expected to send that paper to the second journal. Two or more papers without full cross references. Share the same hypothesis, data, discussion points, and conclusion. These are duplicate publications. An author should submit for consideration another journal, a previously published publication. Do not need to be repeated unless further confirmation is required. Full disclosure is necessary when um, uh, please avoid duplicate publication, provided there is a full and prominent disclosure of its original source at the time of submission this is this is to be avoided and this duplicate publication is unethical improper author contribution ghost authorship 
authorship credit should be based on substantial contributions only drafting the article or revisiting it critically for important intellectual content only final approval of the version to be published author should meet all the conditions if you are giving authorship to anyone this should meet all the conditions acquisition of fundings collection of data general supervision of research group alone does not justify the authorship each author should have sufficiently participated in the work to take public responsibilities for appropriate portions of the content the corresponding author should ensure that all appropriate authors and if there is plagiarism not acceptable ethical problems not acceptable please see this is the duty of the author publication conduct not allowed plagiarism different form severities paper must be original to the author this is what is important duplicate publication appropriate acknowledgement of fair research and researchers please do give appropriate identification of all co-authors conflict of interest submit to the right journal this is my humble advice to each and everyone respected ladies and gentlemen please submit to the right journal see the scope and prestige submit your paper submit your article report to one journal only do not submit salami articles pay attention to journal requirement pay attention to the structure which is in demand by the particular uh, journal check the english pay attention to ethics standards and my dear friend read your work before you hand it in very very important please read your work twice thrice preferably ask someone else to read it to you that is what is very very important and coming to the concluding part of my today's presentation my dear friends publishing is an industry in change new methods for reading new methods for distribution are always on the horizon and in the educational market you all know my dear friends publishers are also working on developing apps developing app applications and multimedia products that reconfigure textbooks into more interactive learning environment and at the same time these publishers internet publishers are developing material for the emerging common core state interact state in standards initiative and which is gaining acceptance in the american school system madam jagaya might be knowing it very very well and as new market is emerging in our country also the risk is highlighted in this essay in this learning module has provided the foundation for authors publishers looking to reach their audience my dear friends the paper the learning module which i have presented before you is based on these references this this is not mine what i have what i have read from all these esteemed authors these are all available online the learning module is based on what they have written thank i am so thankful to all these authors because while reading them i have I have reimagined my concept. I have formulated my concept. I have formulated my um, reshaped my knowledge about writing and publishing in an international atmosphere. Some web links are also there. You can go through these web links also. And last but not the least. thank you thank you once again to all the esteemed participants of this 3 days international virtual workshop on research writing and publications in high impact journals any questions most welcome thanks to the organizer good luck bye bye over to the uh, convener of this
international job, please. Over to Jinu GL, please. That's so thankful to the organizers. Especially would like to express my deep gratitude to Dr. Frank Joyson, uh, deep gratitude to Dr. S. Rajin Silvest and the whole organizing team of this three-day international you, virtual workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions, most welcome. The participants, if we have any questions, you can ask. And one last but not the least, my humble advice to each and everyone, be a dreamer, be a doer, dream it, wish it, and do it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.